Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at how we can use S-Frame to design fixed offshore platforms using the API RP 2A WSD 22 code. In this model that I'm working with, we have a fixed platform substation. We've already got some loads applied. For this example, we're just using static loads, but we could also have dynamic loads which might represent a multitude of different environmental factors and conditions that this type of structure is exposed to. Now I'm going to run the analysis quickly. I'll just run a linear static analysis. And we're getting a clean solution. From here, in the graphical results window, I could obviously look at some of the different load combination or case results. I just have a small number of load combinations I'm checking for the sake of brevity. And we can look at things like axial forces, reactions, and so on, uh, that might help us understand the forces going into the piles underneath our structure uh, and other details related to that. These forces and these deflections and so on will all represent demands on our structure that will be checked in the code checking uh, process within the steel design. So let's just jump into that right away. I'm gonna click on this build steel design model button to proceed with the steel design. And we're brought to the steel design environment. Here I can set up a number of different design uh, parameters, including effective length factors, steel grades, uh, deflection criteria, and more. I'm going to stick with the defaults that I currently have set up, and I'm going to code check. So I'm just going to click the Run menu, code check. And this is going to run a design code validation of the existing sections that I've assigned to my model. I'm just choosing the load combinations uh, here for my demands, and they'll be compared to the design code capacity. And in this case here, I'm using the API RP2A WSD code. So I'll click OK, and it's going to run the code checks. And you can see right away here, we're getting a number of failing utilizations. Now I can drill down into any one specific member by right clicking and going to code details, or I can get a more high level overview of what's happening by going to the file menu and in printing key results. And this is what I'll do for now, Clint, print key results. And we can see here that our high level summary is showing us that we have a number of different elements and design groups in our model, and some of them are failing due to slenderness. So the slender sections uh, are causing the failure, and actually it seems like slenderness is actually governing each one of these checks, but not all of them are failing. So clearly we need to revise our sections in order to come up with a suitable design to pass all the design code uh, requirements. And we can do that manually, uh, one member design group at a time by just upsizing these sections if we wanted to do that in the code results window. But a more, I would say, uh, automated approach would be to use the design input uh, tools. So under the design input tools, we can specify which members we'd like to redesign and have a steel select new sections for us based off of the available sections, uh, perhaps different uh, design or sourcing constraints that we might have uh, and any other constraints that we might want to limit ourselves to. And once we do that, we can select the elements and just tell S steel to go ahead and run the design. So I'll click to run the design again. And the difference between what we're doing now versus what we did just a few minutes ago is now we're actually telling S Steel to look at all the demands on the sections, find a section that meets all the design code requirements and perhaps other requirements that I may have set uh, related to perhaps maximum depth of an element or the maximum weight or surface area and suggest to me the best section that will work for these design groups. Whereas before we were just validating the existing sections in our analysis model. So I'm going to click OK to run the design. It's going through the design of all these members that I've selected. And now it's showing us new utilization ratios. So these ratios, not surprisingly, have changed. And they changed because we've selected new design, uh, new design sections, sorry. So I can right click on one of these elements and I can go to code details. And I can see that the original S-frame section was a 508.0, 6.3 CHS, so a circular hollow section. 
and it's going with a thicker section in this situation. And I can look at the section properties for that shape. I can also look at the code details and I can see the design code report for this particular section. And what's also interesting to me is that here I can look at a list of all the sections that could work. They pass all of my code and perhaps user defined criteria, but it's sorting it based off the lowest weight. We can also sort off cost if we've entered cost data or surface area or depth, and they may not necessarily all end up in the same preference or with the same preference. So it's up to us to decide which option we want to sort by, and then we can select this section that we want to assign. And I can look at a more holistic uh, report as well under the print key results, where I could add pictures if I wanted to, uh, to help me document this design. And here we can see, now we have a much different looking uh, set of governing clauses. We have some related to uh, compression, still have some uh, members that are close to failing or right on the bridge, uh, the verge of failing um, due to slenderness. And it's something that we can actually consider is changing our um, maximum utilization ratio that's going to be allowed. So rather than using a ratio of 100% as our our kind of pass or fail point, we can say, you know what, I want to back that off a little bit and I want to go with 90% or 80%. That can be controlled by the user. This will obviously shoot for an economical design, uh, but there are other factors that you as an engineer might want to consider and perhaps just getting as close to 100% utilization as possible is not necessarily a goal. So you can control that as you like. But here we can scroll through this list of uh, design checks and see for every single member, the governing utilization and clause. And if we keep going, we can see a summary of quantities that's also being calculated for us. So we can look at the overall amount of material that's being used. Uh, so the mass of each element, uh, material, surface area, if we had to paint or treat this in some way on the surface, uh, that could certainly come into play as well. And if we're done with the design checks, we can then go into back into S-Frame and reanalyze because we've changed our section sizes. We can also automate that process using the run reanalyze option, which will basically update our analysis model with these new sections that have a different stiffness and mass. So our analysis results should change because we're getting uh, perhaps different load transfer mechanisms in place, different self weights, uh, and it can reiterate on that process of design checks and finding new sections until everything is passing. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to learn more about S-Frame or S-Steel, we have plenty of other vi videos on our YouTube channel and lots of training available through the learning management system in Altair 1.